Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over the Ogre Clan side quest in the Teal Mask with their locations and all rewards that you can get in your game. The Ogre Clan side quest is definitely something that you're going to want to do at some point in your playthrough of the Teal Mask. There are a total of seven Ogre Clan members scattered around the Paldea region and they do give some very good rewards along with it. It is worth noting that these trainers are quite strong. They have good solid teams and you're going to have to go in with pretty strong Pokemon. So we'll go over all the Pokemon that each trainer will use and some suggestions for you to take in against these trainers. So it'll make it easy for picking up the rewards as you go through this side quest. To initiate the side quest, you're gonna have to come to this area in the Kitakami Hall and speak to this NPC character here. It will initiate the conversation about the Ogre Clan and give you hints where they're located around the Paldea region. And also if you beat them to come back to this NPC character here, who will then give you rewards for each member of the Ogre Clan that you beat. It is worth noting that you can do the Ogre Clan in any order as well you don't need to do it in the order that we're doing in this video but if you want to follow along with the order that we're doing it that is an option for you as well but like i say you can do the ogre clan in any single order that you like throughout your playthrough now the first member of the ogre clan is rakiri and they are an electric type trainer so to get to them from masui town head north and climb up the apple hills near the waterfall here you will find a cave full of geodudes and this is where the first member of the Ogre Clan is located. So Rakiri's team is made up of a Raichu at level 75, Probopass at level 75, Luxury at level 76, and a Vika Vault at level 77. Going in against Rakiri, you probably want a ground type Pokemon against these electric and obviously the Probo Pass, which is rock and steel. And also, if you are using a ground type Pokemon, make sure it has a rock type attack on it. Something like Rock Slide for that Vika Vault, which does have the levitate ability. So you're going to be able to hit that for super effective damage because of its bug typing. Something like Garchomp here with Earthquake and Rock Slide pretty much covers all of these Pokemon perfectly. So it is a decent option going in against Rakiri's team. But once you've beat Rakiri, you can then return to the NPC character that you spoke to at the entrance of the Kitakami Hall. And they will give you a Focus Sash as a reward for beating the Ogre Clan member one. The next Ogre Clan member that we're going to go after is located here in the Bamboo Forest just to the right of the Kitakami Hall. And this trainer is a fairy type specialist. You'll find them just in the bamboo forest here. And their team is going to be made up of a level 75 Grimmsnarl, 77 Clefable, 75 Gardevoir and level 76 Rabombi. Here you're probably going to want a steel type Pokemon. Something like Goldingo is going to be very good against this team in particular. Where you can just launch off those make it rains. And you're not really going to have to worry about any offensive threats coming back at you from this Ogre Clan trainer's team. Again, once you've beat this trainer, if you return to the NPC character that you spoke to at the beginning in the Kitakami Hall, they will give you a reward of 5XL candies. The third Ogre Clan trainer that we're going to go after is called Kotsu and is a fighting type trainer. They are located in the Crystal Pool area, but to get to them, you're going to have to come around to this area if you cross the bridge when you fast travel in here and then come around to this area here where you'll see an entrance, a cave entrance. You want to just drop down into this first floor and you will find them in this location. Now they are a fighting type trainer and they have a team of level 75 Heracross, 76 Conkledur, 75 Gallade and a 77 level Como All. Now a flying type Pokemon will be perfect against this team of course as well. Something like a fairy type as well is going to be very good. So something like Gardevoir as well could be a really good option. So flying and fairy are going to be the two types that you're going to want to bring in against this trainer. Uh, but it shouldn't be too difficult for you to beat. The reward you're going to get for beating this trainer is an assault vest when you go back and visit the NPC character at the Kitakami Hall. The fourth Ogre Clan trainer is going to be an ice type trainer and to locate this trainer you want to head towards the infernal pass and it is a pool to the right of the infernal pass as you can see here on your map and you can make your way to them you can fast travel to the crystal pool and then head west you shouldn't have too much difficulty finding this trainer they'll be standing directly in front of this pool area that's located here on the map now the team is going to be made up of ice type pokemon although they're not going to have just 
specifically ice type Pokemon, they are going to have a mixture of ice and rock type Pokemon. So you're going to have to change things up a little bit for this one. The team is made up of a level 75 Carbink, 76 Froslass, 75 Golem, and a level 77 Mamoswine. Again, if Goldingo is something that you have used, it probably is going to be very good against this trainer as well. A steel type Pokemon is going to be brilliant against this. You're just going to have to watch out for the Golem and the Mamoswine. If you've got a steel type like Goldingo, can be susceptible to things like Earthquake or the ground type attacks that they carry. But if you're high enough level, if you're level 100, you're going to have no trouble against them at all. Some of their options are going to be a mixture of ground and fighting type moves that you can use against this trainer. And the rewards for beating the fourth Ogre Clan member when you return to the NPC character are going to be 10 rare candies. The fifth Ogre Clan member, Kin Mitsu, is located in the Paradise Barrens area. Head northeast to the valley between the two C-shaped rock formations, and you should find this trainer resting in the shade of the large rock that you can see here. Now, their team is going to be centered around the sun. They do have a team of a level 75 Ninetales, a level 76 Shift Tree, a level 76 Chandelure, and a level 77 Lilligant. If you've got access to Heatran, it is going to be a perfect Pokemon to bring against this team. It's going to be able to be immune with its flash fire ability against all the fire type attacks. And it's going to have ground attack of its own in earth power that can threaten the fire types. And then the fire type attack that will threaten the grass types on this trainer's team. The reward for beating this trainer is going to be a choice specs item. The next Ogre Clan member is going to be centered around weather as well. And this time it is going to be centered around the rain weather. So water based team. This trainer is going to be pretty easy to find in the Fellhorn Gorge area located right next to the Fallon Horn and their team is going to be made up of level 75 Politoed, a level 77 Basque Legion, level 76 Ludicolo and a level 77 Dreadnought. Something like Breloom here is going to be brilliant because you're going to have access to something like Bullet Seed or Seed Bomb that's going to be able to damage these water type attackers very good damage and resist the water type attacks that it can throw out at you. And in particular for that Dreadnought at the end, Breloom has access to something like Mac Punch as well, which is going to hit it for super effective priority damage because of that rock typing. If you don't want to rely on just your grass type attacks for this Pokemon, again, something like Ludicolo can come in and do a decent job against this team for the most part. I just need a flying type Pokemon that's going to give you a little bit of a hand against the Ludicolo, but you should be able to hit it for decent damage with your own grass type attacks. And the reward for beating this sixth member of the Ogre Clan is going to be three ability capsules. And finally, we are going to move on to the seventh member of the Ogre Clan, and they are going to have a normal based team. They can be found standing on top of the northeast section of the Infernal Pass. You can see here located on the map. You can get to them easily by gliding northeast from the Crystal Pool if you want to fast travel to this point, and then you'll be able to find them right here. Their team is made up of a level 75 Ambipom, a level 76 Greedon, level 75 Mousehold, and a level 77 Snorlax. If you've got any sort of fighting type here, uh, like Annihilate, it is going to be brilliant against this team. Uh, you don't need to really worry. Fighting type that's going to be like level 100 or anything around there is going to have no trouble beating this team. And once you go back and visit the NPC character, the Kitakami Hall, after beating this Ogre Clan member, you're going to get the item Choice Band given to you as a reward. And after defeating all seven of the members, getting all of the rewards so far, this NPC character, who is actually called Muramasa, does reveal that he is the final member of the Ogre Clan. So he will challenge you to a battle as well. And to complete this side quest, you're going to have to beat him in one final test for one final reward. Now, Muramasa's team is made up of Ghost and Dark type Pokemon, a level 75 Gengar, level 76 Trevenant, a level 75 Crodont, a level 77 Dusclops, and a level 80 King Gambit. Just to note as well that the Dusclops does hold the Eviolite item, so it will have a defense boost on top of its normal defenses with that item. And the King Gambit also has the ability Supreme Overlord, which does get a boost for all of its knocked out partnering Pokemon before it comes onto the field. So it will be hitting pretty hard. You've got something like, again, a Breloom here. It's going to be very good against the King Gambit, against that Crawdont. 
And then you're just going to need a strong dark type Pokemon against the Gengar, the Trevenant and that Dusclops. And you shouldn't have too much trouble here at all against this one. And once you have beat Muramasa's team, you are going to get the final reward for this little side quest, which is an ability patch. So all in all, you do get some nice rewards for this side quest. You get a Focus Sash, the XL Candies, the Assault Vest, Rare Candies, the Choice Specs, the Ability Capsules, the Choice Band Item and an Ability. But it's a nice little side quest to go on. And Muramasa does go on to say at the end of this little side quest that you are the first trainer in Kitakami to have complete this challenge which is very good so that is all of the locations and the rewards for the ogre clan side quest in the teal mask it's definitely worth doing in my opinion for the rewards that you get you get some nice items for free and it's some pretty challenging battles as well for you to go and do in the teal mask it's one of those additional things so if you want to make sure you are completing everything in the game this is definitely something to go out and do and also to boot, you're going to get some nice rewards as well. I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, do drop a like on the video. It does really help. And make sure you do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day. And I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.